previous videos we have used frictional forces in problems but we haven't really considered the properties of frictional forces and in this video we're going to introduce the commonly used model for frictional forces so when two objects are in contact we know that there'll be a normal reaction force acting perpendicular to the line of contact between the two objects and that in addition usually there will be a frictional force acting along the line of contact between the two objects this frictional force opposes any relative motion or tendency towards motion between the two objects if the contact between the two objects is so well oiled that they can move relative to each other without any rubbing at all then the friction forces can be ignored and in such cases the word smooth is used to describe the contact between the two objects the properties of friction can be illustrated by means of a simple thought experiment in which we consider a toy that is initially at rest on a rough horizontal surface the toy is connected by a string passing over a small smooth fixed peg to a load which hangs freely from the string if the weight attached to the string is slowly increased from zero then to begin with the toy will remain at rest on the table but then when the load gets sufficiently large the toy will start to accelerate thus for a while the frictional force between the table and the toy is enough to prevent any motion of the toy but once, once the weight attached to the string exceeds a certain critical value then the frictional force cannot prevent the motion of the toy so let's set up a few variables at this stage let's have W1 being the weight of the toy W2 being the weight of the load we'll let R be the normal reaction between the toy and the table and F be the frictional force between the toy and the table whilst the system is at rest the forces acting on the hanging weight and the forces acting on the toy must be in equilibrium so considering the load first of all the total component of the forces in the vertical direction on the load must be equal to zero in other words we've got the equation T minus W2 must equal 0 so T must be equal to W2 then considering the toy then the total horizontal force acting on the toy must also be equal to 0 because the toy is in equilibrium so therefore we've got T minus F must equal naught or equivalently T must equal F so eliminating T between the two equations that we've got there we've, de we've determined that for equilibrium we must have the frictional force F being equal to the weight of the load in other words we've got F must equal W2 if the weight of the load exceeds the critical value then the equilibrium is going to be broken and the toy will accelerate from rest in this case the frictional force is usually assumed to still be at its maximum value although in practice it will probably be just slightly less than the maximum value the relationship between the frictional force and the hanging weight can usefully be shown on a graph like this for the first part of the graph 
we have got the frictional force equals W2. So we've got a straight line graph at 45 degrees to the axes. But once the motion starts, F just stay, the frictional force stays at its maximum value and the system will start to accelerate. So far, then, our thought experiment has led us to the conclusions that, first of all, friction opposes motion or the tendency towards possible motion, but is never more than just enough to oppose the motion. And secondly, that as the tendency towards motion increases, so does the frictional force until it reaches a maximum possible value, which we're going to call F max, which cannot be exceeded. If the tendency towards motion continues to increase, then motion will start, and we are going to model the frictional force in this case by assuming that it takes its maximum value. So if we've got motion, we are going to assume that the frictional force is actually equal to F max. Now the big question at this stage is what can we say about F max? What does F max depend upon? And we can extend this thought experiment to try and understand the rule for F max. So, still with our rough table there, we're going to impose a downward force of magnitude P newtons to the toy. Now, it will be observed if we do that, that a larger load is needed to break the equilibrium of the system than was previously the case. In particular, if this downward force has magnitude W1, then the critical load will be observed to be twice its previous value. And if the downward force has magnitude 2 W1, then the critical hanging weight will be three times its original value. Now, recalling that the load is the same as the maximum value of the frictional force, we conclude that adding the downward force to the toy increases the value of F max. In particular, if the downward force has magnitude W1, then the maximum friction is twice its original value. And if the downward force has magnitude 2 W1, then the maximum friction is three times its original value. So consideration of the force diagrams will enable us to establish a formula for the maximum value of the frictional force. So. If we consider the toy, the equilibrium of the toy, the total vertical component of all the forces must equal zero. So that is R minus P minus W1 must equal zero. In other words, the reaction force must equal the sum of P and W1. The results discussed on the previous slide can be summarised in a table then. If the force P is zero, then the normal reaction between the toy and the table will be W1. And the maximum value of the friction is the original F max. If the value of the force P added downwards onto the toy is W1, 
then the normal reaction between the toy and the table will be 2w1 and we observed that the value of f max is now twice the original value of f max and if the force p pressing down on the toy was 2w1 then the normal reaction between the toy and the table will be 3w1 and the value of f max in this particular case will be three times the original value of f max these results clearly suggest that the maximum value of the frictional force is proportional to the reaction between the table and the toy in other words we can write that f max is proportional to the normal reaction R or F max equals mu times R where mu is a constant of proportionality which is commonly called the coefficient of friction between the toy and the table surface The value of this constant depends on the materials that the two objects are made from, the lubrication between the two surfaces and the exact profile of the two surfaces. If the lubrication is very good then the value of mu can be very small, but if one of the surfaces is very sticky or very rough then the value of mu can be extremely large. In practice, at the microscopic level, there is no such thing as a flat, even surface, or a surface with a uniform profile. And this means that the value of mu will vary from point to point on a surface. The adoption of a constant value of mu is another example of an assumption that is frequently made in the process of producing a mathematical model of a situation. We'll now try and summarize these key facts about friction. First of all, we know that friction opposes motion or the tendency towards motion, but it's never more than just enough to oppose the motion. Secondly, as the tendency towards motion increases, so does the frictional force until it reaches a maximum value f max which can which cannot be exceeded if the tendency towards motion continues to increase then motion will start and the frictional force can be assumed to take its maximum value in this case the maximum value of the frictional force between a particle and a surface is proportional to the normal reaction r constant of proportionality is called the coefficient of friction which is usually has the symbol mu and it's the coefficient of friction between the particle and the surface and we have the rule f max is equal to mu times r these key facts about friction mean that a new condition now must be added to ensure that a particle is in equilibrium not only must the resultant force acting on the particle be zero but also the size of any frictional forces must be less than or equal to their maximum possible values as given by f max equals mu times r We say that a particle is in limiting equilibrium if the frictional force acting on the particle is equal to the maximum possible value for the friction. In the next video, we'll be looking at um, using the model for frictional forces to tackle questions involving friction.